Hey everyone, Shabim here and welcome to our first part of the New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion pay-per-view, I think. Huh, doesn't seem to work. I don't know if it's worked or not. Is this the correct arena? And here is our first match of the evening. It is going to be the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships in a Tornado Tag Team match. As best friends, Trent Beretta and Chuck Taylor take on the champions, Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode? Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. I've got Roode on the mind. I've got a Roode mind. Here we go then. First up, we have got representing, uh, of course, the Chaos Stable. It is best friends. And their opponents are, of course, the IWGP Tag Team Champions. Or Junior Tag Team Champions, should I say. It is, of course, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish of Red Dragon representing the Undisputed Era. And that's what it's all for, then. The most pixelated Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships in all of SWE. Of course, your challenge then. Who uh, have uh, won, of course, the number one contendership match against the Young Bucks to get here, which was a bit of a surprise. I sort of, um, I sort of assumed that Young Bucks would win that, to be honest. But there you go. And of course, we have got your tag team champions. Of course, won the belts. Uh, I think against the Bucks. I can't really remember, to be honest with you. It's not the piece of paper I have in front of me. Uh, won the match a long time ago. So this should be a very interesting way of starting our pay-per-view. We've got three matches for you in this episode. Also, we're going to see uh, Brian Cage and Michael Elgin team together for the first time in this universe mode as they take on Jeff Cobb and, uh, and a partner of Jeff Cobb's choice. The winner of that one will get an opportunity at a future IWGP tag team match. Right, the bell goes and we are underway our first championship match of the evening. We have two in this episode. Uh, after this match, we will have another tag team match as Michael Elgin and Brian Cage will team up together to take on the team of Jeff Cobb and a partner of his choice for a chance at a future IWGP Tag Team Championship match. Also, in our main event of this first part of this Dominion pay-per-view, which for some reason the arena has not worked, we will see Chris Jericho defend the United States Championship against Juice Robinson and Zack Sabre Jr. Nice strikes right in the gut there by Bobby Fish on Trent. A nice knee in the gut as well. Fish now brings Trent back up to his feet. Spinning heel kick to the gut. Trent fights back with a boot in the face of Bobby Fish now. Looking for that backdrop. Trent now wrenching back of that arm. Nice arm breaker on Bobby Fish. Trent brings Fish back up to his feet now into a suplex. As Kyle Ray locks in the ankle lock on his name there, Chuck Taylor. Of course it's Chuck Taylor. Oh, I forgot his name for. 
I'm getting getting uh, forgetful of my old age, you know. I still feel like, in my opinion, that uh, Red Dragon are the favourites for this match. However, you can never really write off best friends. They've, uh, they've been that sort of underdog tag team for quite some time and they have had some incredible matches and they have won some championships. And, of course, recently signed for AEW. I feel like it's just going to get better and better for them. I feel like AEW are going to focus very much on tag team wrestling. So, really looking forward to seeing uh, what they get up to there. Because I, I just I'm so hyped to see what happens there. It's just... It's a little bit unknown at the moment of AEW, so um, I won't say too much because I'll save it for a shabby news episode at some point. I'll go through the, the new roster and so forth. Trent now dropping Kyler Riley neck first across that top rope. Dropping a boot right into the thigh. Chuck the boot in the chest again. Chuck Taylor big strikes in the face of Bobby Fish and big overhand punch as well. And uh, Kyle Ray locks in the cross armbar. Chuck Taylor taking down Bobby Fish. I think Chuck Taylor's even noticed it. Now he has noticed, comes across, does try and break it up. He breaks it up by kicking his own partner in the leg, which is a bit of a weird way of doing it, isn't it, really? But hey ho. Elbow in the knee by Trent now takes Kyle Riley up and drops him into a crunchy. There's the pin. Fish sees it straight away, and the referee didn't even get down for a one count in the meantime. Nice hurricane there by Trent on Bobby Fish. He's got a close that into a sling blade as well there by Trent on Bobby Fish. As now Chuck Taylor just slamming the face of Kyle O'Reilly into that turnbuckle pad. Trent tripping Bobby Fish over. The boot in the gut and now looking for that reverse dragon sleeper. Now, Kyle O'Reilly is down and Bobby Fish is locked in this submission. If Fish taps, we've got brand new Judy Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. No, Bobby Fish is able to roll himself free. Chuck Taylor stalking. Kyle O'Reilly just kicks Chuck Taylor away. O'Reilly went for the super kick, but... Uh, Chuck Taylor avoiding now takes O'Reilly up into a pile driver. Taylor now bringing Chuck, uh, bringing Kyle O'Reilly up, but Kyle O'Reilly fights back with that super kick again. Chuck Taylor running into Guri on Kyle O'Reilly, and best friends are in firm control this match at this point in time. Chuck Taylor stalking Kyle O'Reilly. We could have brand new tag team champions here. The awful waffle, I think. Hit there by Chuck Taylor and Trent needs to take Bobby Fish out of this one. He does with a side to suplex. Oh, but Kyle O'Reilly was able to kick out. I really thought we were going to have brand new junior heavyweight tag team champions right there, but not the case. What is Trent going for now? Trent stalking Bobby Fish from the outside. He's a long distance away. Springboard drop kick. Wow. Got a lot of distance on that drop kick. A huge amount of distance on that drop kick. Lock it in the cross arm bar. It's fish the tap, no fish able to break free. Fish now locking in a cross face submission here on Trent and Chuck Taylor looking to try and break it. He does break it. It's a great way here to start off this pay-per-view. Uh, two teams really fighting two for now to get this championship. But now all of a sudden, Red Dragon are taking control. And if they can turn this match around and win it from here, it shows how great resilience they have because they were really struggling. Only five minutes to go. Now they're really struggling again. Both members down. Oh, but a complete turnaround there once again. Just shows how quickly this match can turn. On a sixpence, Kyle O'Reilly now stalking Trent. Catches him in that front guillotine. I don't think Chuck's even seen it yet. Chuck does see it now and breaks it up. Well, he tries to break it. Yes, he does, finally. And Chuck Ted is the only man on his feet at this point in time. Can he take advantage of that situation? 
He's going very, very slowly if he wants to take advantage of it. Nice discus and Chuck Taylor. Front chantry on Bobby Fish. There's the pin. One, two. Only a two count. Nice German suplex there by Bobby Fish on Chuck Taylor. Brings him back up. Chuck Taylor manages the fight free. And again, this match just seems to turn the sixpence so often. It's real end-to-end -end stuff. Which one of these two teams are going to walk away from this video with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships? Chuck Taylor, pile driver, middle of the ring on Bobby Fish. Taylor now brings Fish back up to his feet into a jawbreaker. Waffle Waffle once again by Chuck Taylor. But Kyle O'Reilly's there. He's going to break it up straight away. Wow. And now Saito suplex. And that is a big boot there by Kyle O'Reilly sending Chuck Taylor to the outside. Nice big elbow. Running forearm by Bobby Fish as well. O'Reilly takes out uh, Trent. And that's cross arm bar locked in. Nice neck breaker there by Trent. And once again, best friends just seem to always get back on top. It's just a. Uh, it's weird how they just always seem to have the number. Every time Red Dragon seem to get any offense together, it doesn't seem to be long before Best Friends are able to turn it around. But the one thing Best Friends have not been able to do so far is finish the match off, and that's what they need to do, I feel. Let's take them there by Chuck. Grabs the legs. Nice drop kick by Trent. He actually springboarded over the top of the referee. Trent now with a pin, but broken straight away by Bobby Fish. Riley catches the knee of Chuck. Crunchy there by uh, by Trent. And if I was going to say if Chuck can get control of Kyle Riley, they might have an opportunity. But Kyle Riley takes Chuck out. Nice dragon suplex by Kyle Riley. Bridge for the pin, but Trent was able to kick out. Nice boot in the gut there by Kyle O'Reilly on Trent. Clubbing blows to the back. Trent takes O'Reilly down. And a big, big stiff chop. Chuck Taylor now looking for that big knee drop to the outside and misses it. And now Trent going for a big cross body and hits it. Wow. That was some cross body to the outside that was. As all four guys get back into the ring. This is a hell of a way to start off this pay-per-view. And to me, I, I said earlier on that I thought the best friends were, were going to struggle here. I thought the Red Dragon would just start, start echelon ahead of most other tag teams. But at the moment, to be honest, I've changed my mind. I think best friends are most likely to win this based on all the action we've seen so far. They seem to be dominating the majority of it. Chuck Taylor now taking Bobby Fish up into a pile driver. Slamming in the arm into the mat. Get a team locked in. Oh, but here we go. This is going to be an opportunity here as no Chuck Taylor is able to get there just in time. It's closed on there by Bobby Fish as Kyle O'Reilly sends Trent to the outside. Big forearm. Fish gets his leg caught though by Chuck Taylor. And now the battle contains in the ring just two men. Effectively a singles match to win the match here because the other two on the outside. I don't think they're going to be able to get back in soon enough. Bobby Fish has a hold of the arm of Chuck Taylor, wrenching back of that arm. Trent comes across, drop kick to the side of Bobby Fish, breaks up that submission. Trent 
Trent taking control of Fish. Fish with the boot in the gut of Trent. And Fish is launching Trent to the outside. Now Fish going up top. We've seen some high flying already. And another high flying attack to the outside by Bobby Fish on Trent. Chuck Taylor off a waffle once again on the inside of the ring. Fish, I think, is going to get there in time, though, too. He does get there. Very, very close to a free, though. Fish now big stomps in the corner on Chuck Taylor. Brings Chuck back up to his feet. Sends him over the top. Bobby Fish was up on the apron celebrating and Chuck caught him, dropped him face first on that top turnbuckle. Slamming him neck first into the corner. Oh my God, they've done it. They've actually done it. They've actually gone and done it. The team of Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta, best friends, are your new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Wow. Red Dragon didn't even keep these belts for a single defense. That's crazy. There's the pile driver by Chuck Taylor and Bobby Fish. An awful waffle by Chuck Taylor and Bobby Fish again. So it, it was coming. I said beforehand, it just seemed to me anyway like they just seem to dominate the match. It surprised me. I weren't expecting it at all uh, from the offset. I really thought Red Dragon would keep their belts. But as I said, the ultimate underdogs in the tag team division here. Best friends have gone and pulled it out of the bag. Good times. And here is our next match there. We're going to skip the old... Uh, we're going to skip the old... Uh, card because I don't want to see who uh, Cobb's partner is but I think a lot of you may have guessed already. First of all then we have got the team of Michael Elgin and Brian Cage and here we go then yes I think most of you may have guessed already Jeff Cobb's partner is going to be Matt Riddle the Chosen Bros are back together for one night only. Not one night only now we're keeping them out but what the hell am I on about? And here we go then. Wow, look at that. Straight off the bat. A powerbomb shoulder breaker by Jeff Cobb on Brian Cage. Now, I forgot to mention, this is actually going to be a tables match. The first person to put their opponent for a table will win this match. And like I said before, it will be for a future shot at the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. Of course, that match is coming up for you in our next video, which will be the club defending their belts against Evil and Sonada. So a lot of cool stuff still to come for you in this Dominion pay for you. We'll go for three episodes. This is episode one out of three, of course. So I think most of you may have guessed that Matt Riddle was going to be Jeff Cobb's partner. Uh, they did team together for a little bit in New Japan, of course, before Matt Riddle went to WWE, but we can still live a bit of fun, can't we? Nice shoulder block there by Matt Riddle, a boot right in the knee. Of Michael Elgin before dropping a cent on. This is an interesting match. I think Matt Riddle's probably got the slight disadvantage because the other three men in this match are all freakishly strong. I mean, Matt Riddle is obviously very, very good at wrestling, but the strength is going to be something that's going to be very, very difficult for him to match with the likes of Brian Cage and Michael Elgin, which is why I think probably his best bet is to not. You want to try and utilize your own strength game, so the strikes and the submissions might be the best way for Matt Riddle to take this one. But of course, it just means. Uh, it just whoever gets pushed through the table the quickest and I feel like that's a very much a strength game Be able to pick your opponent up and throw him in the table is a massive advantage. I'm not quite sure Matt Riddle has That uh, same ease to do that. He can he can do it but It's not gonna be as easy as it is for the likes of Elgin and Cage Riddle with a knee in the back of Elgin A boot in the leg Riddle brings Elgin back up to his feet. Elgin, nice clothesline taking Riddle to the outside. Now Cobb and Elgin fight back in the middle. Cage has a chair. A chair. He has a table. 
I'm having like um, I'm having like a, a furniture dyslexia here at the moment. Cobb has Elgin up and buckle bombs him. Wow, the strength shown by Cobb to that is absolutely immense. And now big chops by Matt Riddle taking Brian Cage out. Riddle slides back into the ring. Cage has a hold of him, drags him across, drops him face first into that turnbuckle. And that's actually busted Riddle open, I think. I can just about see a little bit of blood from here. Yes, it is. I can see it. Wow. To make things difficult early days for Matt Riddle being busted open already. But of course, Matt Riddle's come from UFC. Be very used to these sort of situations of taking early hits and still being able to continue on. Elgin makes... Oh, wow. Matt Riddle just got absolutely launched into the ring steps by Brian Cage. Elgin has a hold of the table. But Jeff Cobb catches him. Clothesline to the back as Cage sends Matt Riddle into the stairs. And again into the stairs by Cage and Riddle was Jeff Cobb now. Oh, gorilla press on Michael Elgin into a standing moonsault. Wow. Jeff Cobb is uh, really doing amazingly well here. Of course, it has been both Cage and Elgin who've got victories over Cobb in singles competition over the previous few weeks. So Cobb will definitely be looking for some sort of retribution there. But Elgin brings... Cobb up with a gut wrench suplex as Riddle taking down Brian Cage into a Pele kick as well. And how long before Matt Riddle has to wear shoes? Same thing with Rusev, wasn't it? Rusev uh, wasn't wearing boots at all until he had a foot injury, then ended up having to wear boots because they do support the body, they do support the muscles. God, Riddle, get the, get, get the table sorted as well. What a backdrop that was by Cobb, and all of a sudden, Cobb. And Riddle in the middle of the ring are in control of Elgin while Cage is grounded on the outside. Elgin with the big boots now into a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Matt Riddle is there though, straight on top of Elgin. Matt Riddle taking Elgin up onto his shoulders into a GTS. Wow. And follows up with a running boot. See, it's weird how some animations don't ever seem to break and I think that's one that should break. I mean, that was crazy, the fact that Brian Cage they were just sort of just punching away at thin air and it wouldn't let him break it. It was weird. What is Brian Cage even considering with his life here? Cage, don't do it, man. Oh my god, he's just did it. Double axe handle to the outside on Matt Riddle. I've got his name there for a second. I'm doing railway names today, aren't I? Elgin completely fattens fattens? Flattens Jeff Cobb with that table and I think a uh, busted open Michael Elgin there as well with that back elbow by Jeff Cobb. But Elgin fighting back with him for a super kick. It's a very slow super kick and oh look at that German suplex onto the actual table as well. That metal barring underneath the table that supports it. And Jeff Cobb is going to set the table up. He feels like he might have an opportunity here. He drags Michael Elgin across to the table. Jeff Cobb now looking for that German suplex on Elgin. Puts him through the table and the Chosen Bros have picked up the victory. And they will get an opportunity at the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions very, very soon. Of course, who those champions will be, we don't know as of yet. Like I said earlier on, the club, Gallows and Anderson will be defending them in the next episode against LIJ's Evil and Sonata. But here we go, a pump handle German by Jeff Cobb putting Michael Elgin through the table. And with the losses that Cobb has suffered over the previous couple of weeks, over both Brian Cage and Michael Elgin in singles competition, Jeff Cobb would be very, very happy to finish that cold streak and bring his new partner in with a bang. And Matt Riddle has an amazing debut and gets himself a number one contendership at the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. So it's a great night all round for the Chosen Bros. But there we go. I mean, it was a bit of an obvious choice for the tag team partner, but you've got to go with the classics, haven't you? And here is our main event of our first part of our Dominion pay-per-view. We will see Chris Jericho defending his IWGP United States Championship against Zack Sabre Jr. and Juice Robinson. And here we go, here is our first challenger for the belt. It is going to be Zack Sabre Jr. 
we've seen some interesting stuff between Zack and Chris Jericho over the last couple of months, of course, stemming from the G1 Climax Tournament. A lot of argy-bargy going on there, and it has fell over into our universe mode, which involves Zack actually getting a one-on-one -on -one victory against Chris Jericho a few weeks back. And here is the second challenge, and it is going to be Juice Robinson. Good old Juice. Rocking the young Dave Lister look. If you get that reference, you're pretty cool. Uh, he won this match. Um, as essentially, he was due to have a match one-on-one -on -one against Chris Jericho. And Kenny Omega uh, ran into the match and actually attacked, um, uh, attacked Chris Jericho. Omega trying to force his way into this triple threat. Uh, we gave Omega the chance, though, against Juice. We gave Juice the chance to prove what he can do as well. And Juice actually got the win over Kenny Omega to get this match here. So he's not an underdog in this one. He could very much be a new champion. Talking of champions, then here is your United States champion, Chris Jericho Alpha Club himself. And that's what it's for. One of the most pixelated United States championships in the entire SWE Universe mode. As the Japanese referee holds it up high. That's what they're all fighting for. One red belt of sheer pixelated glory. Alpha Club Chris Jericho defending against Zack Sabre Jr. and Juice Robinson. And straight away Zack and Jericho going after each other. As you would expect these two guys have been arguing back and forth for quite some time. And there's a lot of heat between the two of them. Juice Robinson really just interjected himself into the match by sheer luck. Like I said... Uh, Kenny Omega interfered in the match between Juice and Jericho a few episodes back. We felt sorry for Juice because he wasn't given the opportunity to really prove himself in that main event. So we gave him the opportunity against Omega and he beat Omega, which is a, a massive, massive victory. And at the moment, Juice in control of this United States Championship match as well. Who knows? Juice could walk away United States Champion. Just like he's in real life, I suppose. Zack taking Jericho up into a nice Michinoko driver. Jericho, nice DDT on Zack as well. Jericho brings Zack back up to his feet and that's collar and elbow tie up. Juice comes back in the ring. Zack with a one legged drop kick on Jericho and then a big boot right to the knee. And Zack and Juice really going back and forth, back and forth here. Zack drops the outside. Now Juice and Jericho go up battling. Go up battling? Is that a real phrase? Have I just made that up? I don't know. Nice. It's a uh, bow and arrow style submission there by Chris Jericho. But Juice was able to pop himself free into a pinning predicament. Not enough though to get even a one count. A little brain buster there by Jericho. As Zack's back in the ring now and... Wow, Zack brought Juice back up. Jericho tried to catch him with a drop kick. I think Jericho actually fell, and now Zack locks in, locks in the cross arm bar and hooks the leg as well. Juice was uh, relaxed up on the ring, and now does come across and break it up with a with a punch two foot above the actual submissions. I don't know how that worked, but it did somehow. Robinson now locks in a Boston Crab on Zack Sabre Jr., Nice Robinson with the it's a neck break across the top rope. And of course, remember, anything goes is triple threat. So uh, weapons are allowed. As Juice Robinson brings in a table. Of course, we've just seen tables in our previous match. And now Juice looking to interject him into this match as well. Jericho with a front chance. But Zach taking Juice up as well into a gut buster between the pair of them. They might not like each other, but they're working very, very well together there. Zack now taking Jericho up into a Saito suplex, folds him in half of a snaps his neck, and Zack happy with himself, as he would be. Zack now brings Jericho back up, but Jericho fighting back with the uppercuts. Now catches Zack. Now what's Jericho looking for here? Just drapes or just throws Zack to the outside, actually. I'm quite sure that's a wise idea. You mean, you can only win the belt inside the ring. I suppose for Jericho, it doesn't matter too much. He doesn't need to win this match as such. It's championship's advantage, so he could just he could be on the outside as long as he really wants to be honest but he wants to win this match 
course, Championship Survivor is not really going to help him here, is it? Because disqualification doesn't count. There's no count outs either. So really, yeah, you do want to stay in the ring with one weak opponent and throw the other one to the outside. But what am I on about? I'm not even getting anything right now. I'm like one of these WWE commentators that don't even know the rules. Nice kicks there by Zack and a spinning heel kick to the gut of Jericho before just running Jericho into Juice and Jericho tripped over Juice. It's a bit embarrassing. Now Zack sending Jericho right gut first into the ring steps. Now Zack going after Juice. Zack obviously feeling that Juice might be an easier target for the pin. So sends Juice back into the ring. But Jericho's back up on his feet as well. And it looks like he probably is going to join them. Jericho very slowly back into the ring. He's not busted a gut to get there, is he? But Jericho, nice disc as forearm on Zack. And now Jericho going to go for the pin on Juice. One. Only a one count. Jericho now bringing Juice back up to his feet. And now Jericho has his legs... He's middle of the ring. Is Jericho going to turn him? He does turn him, but Zack is back up on his feet. And Zack comes... Zack, come on, Zack, get in the ring. Zack, do something. Oh, this game is just stupid, isn't it? Zack Sibber Jr. decides he's not really bothered if Jericho wins the match. Obviously, that's uh, part of the feud. I've got no bloody idea. That was stupid. Code breaker there by Jericho on Juice. I'll tell you what, if Zack can take Jericho out here, then Zack can sneak and Juice get the victory here. Zack does throw Jericho to the outside. Zack pin Juice. Why have you not pinned Juice? Oh my god, this game is so stupid. Now he does pin Juice, but ages after the damage was done and it's not enough. I mean, if you just pinned him straight away, like I said, then you might have won this match. But to get me that much is making me go high-pitched. Zack now rolling through Juice. Nice boot there by Zack on Juice and went to the clothesline on the outside. Juice just launches Zack to the outside. And now Jericho, really poor time to do it, mate. Just taunting on the corner. Juice just German suplex him across the ring. Juice now brings Zack back up. Nice super kick by Juice. Oh, Juice, man. Juice. Zack's down on the outside. Juice for the pin on Jericho. Juice is the champion. Juice has done it. Holy crap. Juice, man. He had to go the hard way. He had to beat Omega to even get this match. But he was very, very smart in what he did. Sending Zack to the outside and hitting the super kick on Chris Jericho to pick up the victory. Even pinning the champion in the process. He took a lot of damage, didn't he, old uh, Juice? He took a code breaker. He took a walls of Jericho. I mean, Zack, there was just sheer stupidity. If he stayed in the ring and pinned him straight away, he might have had the chance to get the free count, but it wasn't to be. And there we go, Juice Robinson. Good old Dave Lister has a hold of the championship belt, and we have got a brand new United States champion. It is, I believe, the United States champion in real life. I'm dating this video now. Of course, Juice Robinson. It was a difficult, arduous match for him, but he came out on top, and that is a massive, massive win for him. And it's a big loss for Chris Jericho in his first championship defense. Chris Jericho loses the United States Championship. Well, there we go, guys. That is the part one of Dominion completed. We've still got two more parts for you in next video. We will have Kushida versus Taiji Ishimori for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Gallows and Anderson, the club, versus Evil and Sonata of LIJ for the Tag Team Championships. And Finn Balor versus Tetsuya Naito for the Intercontinental Championship. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Of course, if you have, then please do hit a like and of course subscribe if you want to see some more. I've been Chevy Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you very, very soon for the next part of this pay per view. Bye. Oh, I knocked everything over.